Welcome to another OUinsider.com podcast. I'm RJ Young. I am joined by OUI staff writer Colin Kennedy. Colin, what's going on, man? Man, we got a lot to talk about. I'm excited about this. We were, we were talking before the show. How long are we going? 30 minutes, hour? And I'm already saying I feel like a rant or two is coming on today. So let's get into this thing, man. I'm excited. Okay, so let's, let's start off the top with uh, the Rattler superlatives. I mean, Strike was venomous. I mean, just snaky with the football. Just absolutely whipping like a King Cobra. I was using all of the snake analogies on Saturday night because it was that it was that cool to watch because we, you know, we hyped this kid and we hyped him for good reason. And there are lots of questions about is he that good? And by the end of the first half, it's not just how good he is, it's could he play in the NFL tomorrow? And that was an interesting question that I wanted to start with and that I sent to a couple of folks that watch the NFL professionally, and they're like, the thing is, just want to see him grow up. You know, you want to see him mature and see how that goes, see how he does day-to-day inside the program. So it's going to be a lot about what those coaches have to say and what folks that evaluate him that aren't from the program have to say. But for the most part, he has everything that you want right now. I don't give a damn if it is Missouri State because there are just some things that he could do that you can't teach. That was my big takeaway from Rattler. What was yours? That that was a really big thing for me is going into this game, knowing the quality of opponent and knowing that Missouri State probably wasn't even as good as these practice squad. I wanted to see him put some stuff on film that is verifiable, it's tangible results that you can carry over into other football games. And for me, as we've talked about in the past, when I'm evaluating a quarterback, I want to see accuracy. I want to see where is he putting the football because – Windows are windows, no matter where they're generated from. And as a result, when I saw Spencer Rattler throwing some dots and dimes all over the field, I was incredibly encouraged. I think Rattler had some really nice plays. He was able to create and generate offense, especially in some difficult situations. Even though he had five starters on the offensive line with starts under their belt, I do think that some of those guys were struggling a little bit early on. And he made plays when he was asked to. Now, again, I mean, the quality of the opponent has to be factored and considered, but at the same time, he was dishing the ball around. Theo Weiss, really excited about what Spencer could do. Some of those other players were really impressed with what he pulled off. And I think overall, when you're looking at Rattler's performance, you just have to be simply encouraged. Now, the question, can he play in the NFL tomorrow? I'm not going to go that far because, as we've seen, the NFL is really difficult to play in. But I do think this kid already has the mental makeup and tools to play in the Big 12 Conference, which is saying something. So as a result, I'm really excited to see what Spencer does moving forward. And I think you saw a quick glimpse of what he can do in some pressure situations, even though it probably wasn't the consistent quality opponent that he's going to be seeing the rest of the way. Absolutely not going to be the quality opponent that he's going to see the rest of the way. And we'll get into that, I promise. I promise. But it was, it was really great to see Marvin Mims have a day. One of the things that I took away and from the, the notes, actually, was Marvin Mims came within nine yards of tying Joe Washington for the most all-purpose yards by a freshman in a career debut. Joe Washington went for 157 his first time out at Oklahoma, and Marvin Mims goes for 148, 80 yards receiving, of course, his first catch is a 58-yard touchdown from Rattler. Averaged 22.7 yards per punt return. He was my guy to watch going into that game. I'm glad that he had an opportunity to show out because it's one thing for me to continue to just tell everybody that Marty Mims was that dude at Lone Star Frisco. And to see how his entire story has evolved has been fascinating. I mean, this time last year, he's committed to play at Stanford. He's about to play his second game of the season and just four months later we're talking about decommitting from Stanford quietly reaching out to just a handful of coaches quietly one of which is OU to say hey I'm, I'm back on the market do you want me and Riley said absolutely 2629 yards receiving damn right I want you and then you look at his measurables a 46740 you don't see the blazing speed you don't think of Charleston Rambo and you certainly don't think the punt returner and yet him back there looked natural looked smooth and looked confident which you know, I'm watching Monday Night Football, right? And Deontay Johnson is shaky at best. Muffs the first punt, doesn't know what he's doing for the second punt. And I was just thinking about how Marvin Mims looked like he'd been doing this his entire life. And that was awesome to see, especially with the connection that he's had with Rattler, because I think you would agree with me. We expected 
Jaden Hazelwood, Trajan Bridges, Theo Weiss, Austin Stogner, that had that relationship with Rattler. And what does it say about Marvin Mims that they've been able to do that in quite literally like 14 practices, 15 practices? Like, because nobody got a spring game, right? So it's quite literally them, them just making this up and Riley putting in some scheme that benefits both of them. Yeah, and I think this just says a ton about Marvin Mims and who he is as a person, not only as a player. I I was so happy for him. Obviously, you try and play the unbiased card when it comes to these games and being analytical, but anyone who's been around Marvin and covered him throughout his recruiting process knows the kid is second to none in terms of maturity, intellect, knowledge of the game, and just being a leader. And I think Marvin, to be this good already in that first game, That says a lot for me. And, I mean, not only was he impacting the offensive game, obviously with that big touchdown reception in the second drive for Spencer, but, I mean, for him to have 60-plus yards punt returning as a true freshman, that's a really big deal for me. If he can impact two of the three facets of the game, the Sooners just got a massive boost on the roster, and he's going to be here for a little while. I think Marvin, he's fascinating to me because there were people in the state of Texas evaluating him who told me, oh, that kid is second to none. And some were like, well, I'm not really incredibly high on him. And I think it was always really kind of what he looks like on paper, right? I mean, he's not the biggest dude or the fastest, like you mentioned, but if you know who he is above the above the, the, the heart, I mean, the guy has so much knowledge in his brain, and then you factor in what's in his chest. The guy is never afraid. He's always going to step up and take on that leadership role and apply his knowledge in those difficult situations. And I think that's what really helped him get through these past few weeks of practices and then put it all together on the field. Marvin is going to be an impact player this season. I have no doubt about it. And this was only a glimpse of what's to come in the future. Now, he's going to see, obviously, much better opponents. And maybe those punt returns will be near as easy when it's a little bit different coverage. But at the same time, he's already grasping things that you have to apply at the D1 college level And it's only going to get better. That's why I'm so encouraged by Marvin Mims. And when I factor in the the brain and the heart, I mean, Marvin's going to be such a good player for the Sooners. I'm excited to see what he does as a true freshman this season. Yeah, man, he showed out. Charleston Rambo did what we expected him to do. Watching Lincoln Riley put two H-backs in at inside receiver was also kind of cool because you got to see Mikey Henderson, got to see Stogner, you got to see Jeremiah Hall. But the surprise for me, as much as it can be a surprise for me, is Seth McGowan because I really expected Marcus Major to have the kind of game that Seth McGowan ended up having. So knowing that you got a true freshman that has that is phenomenal. Knowing that you get Ramondre Stevenson back probably in the next four games is better. And knowing that you probably get TJ Pledger back for Kansas State is even better. Do you think we're going to see as much Seth McGowan or Marcus Major in the future as we saw against Missouri State? I think the Kansas State game is going to really tell us a lot because, as I mentioned in the postgame pod, I really do feel like this running back room still has yet to be established. From a role perspective and an alpha perspective, I don't think that much is certain when it comes to this group. And I think what Seth McGowan did on Saturday night kind of fueled that fire. I think not very many people expected him to put on the performance that he did. But in the end result, I mean, the guy was – the dude to lean on averaging 6.8 a carry touchdown on the first carry as well, becoming just the seventh, you know, you football history to score on his first rushing attempt. I mean, McGowan can be that guy apparently. And if you know that, then why would you make the decision right now to completely factor him out? I don't think the Sooners were really necessarily considering McGowan as a true contributing factor moving forward, but I mean, you can't ignore what he put together against Missouri state. So as a result, I'm still expecting this to be a wide-open rotation, aren't you? I think these guys are going to be able to really establish themselves in practice, and they're going to have to fight to get on the field come game time. And then once we really see how they try and put together some carries against the Wildcats, I think we're going to really learn who they trust as they get into the thick of the Big 12 Conference. 